anyone who intimidates or tampers with witnesses. You have heard my office many times putting on notice anyone who attempts to bribe, threaten, or intimidate Office of the Prosecutor witnesses. Those who attempt to pervert justice by instilling fear or paying off witnesses to stay quiet are criminals. We will not hesitate to investigate and prosecute them. I met with the Chief Justice and exchanged views on issues of mutual interest. Additionally, I met with members of civil society who also briefed, and I also briefed the diplomatic community on developments in my office work. This morning, I went to Nakuru in order to meet with victims of the 2007-2008 post-election violence. This trip to Nakuru was an expression of my desire to listen to and interact with victims. Tomorrow, I plan to visit Kiamba Church and its environs, continuing my exchange with victims and meet with other members of the public. My visit to Eldoret is primarily about public information on the ICC process and my role as prosecutor. Of course, I cannot meet with all victims throughout Kenya, nor listen to everyone affected by the post-election violence. I wish I could. But to those I shall meet, and to all those whom I cannot, I say this. I have had the opportunity to meet and listen to many, too many, victims of massive crimes. I am always touched and humbled by the dignity and courage of those who have lost and suffered so terribly. The start point and end point of this entire ICC process in Kenya remains the post-election violence victims and the justice they deserve. When we speak of courage, I want to speak also of the special kind of moral courage shown by our witnesses. Caring for witnesses and ensuring their well-being is a key priority for me. It takes an exceptionally moral breed of person to stand up and speak. The challenges we face together with witnesses and the sacrifices they make for the sake of truth and justice are exemplary. To these Kenyans who are prepared to come forward and to protect the truth no matter what, and to all other witnesses who have come forward and continue to come forward I want to say thank you. To others who may harbor doubts, I say to be courageous and follow the examples of your brothers and sisters who are helping ICC to expose the truth. I want to say this. I am prepared to say it again and again, lest there be any mistake. No matter what anyone else may say, whoever they are, we are impartial. We are objective. We are independent. We are not biased against anyone. We are not biased against Kalenjin or Kikuyu or against Kisi or Luo, Maasai or any Kenyan tribe. This is not a case about political responsibility. It is not a case of targeting certain communities. It is about individual criminal responsibility. The ICC message is clear. No one, irrespective of status, can commit crimes on a massive scale and get away with it. This is the law. ICC's sole purpose is to end impunity for the worst crimes in the world. Genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and to prevent future crimes. To transform the words, never again, from a moral promise to a legal obligation. Let me conclude by repeating what I said on Monday. Our motivation is those who are indisputably the real victims of Kenya's post-election violence. Families, women, men, children, and babies who have been beaten, killed, burned, raped, mutilated, 
and dispossessed. For them, and for the sake of all Kenyans, it is crucial to break the cycle of impunity and violence. Ensuring justice and accountability can play a part. We stand ready to do so. We stand ready to do our part. But we cannot do it alone. It is up to Kenyans to decide to make this happen within a strong and united Kenya. And I hope I can count on Kenyans in this joint endeavor. I thank you again. I will take questions. Okay, uh, remember to wait for the, uh, we're going to start on this side, wait for the mic and introduce yourself. Okay, so here. Where's the mic? Hi. My name is Beda Kume. I work for KTN, Standard Media Group. It's evident that the information that you're looking for from the government is so important in this case. In case you don't get it on time, are you afraid that it might cause a down your case? Sorry? I, um, it is important, uh, the, the information, um, and it's, it's also relevant uh, for my case. I'm not looking into a scenario of not getting it. As I said, um, I received strong promises, and uh, I am hopeful that it will be forthcoming. Okay. My name is Aida Mongiri from The Nation. Some of the suspects are already engaging regional leaders I mean, to try and uh, rally their support against the SEC process. What is your comment on this? Well, the... Um, uh, they are free to do uh, or engage whoever they want to to engage but what i can say is that the icc process is ongoing and uh, it is not dependent on the um, political outcome or political process we will follow our judicial timetable and it is ongoing so um, if uh, uh, they decide to engage anybody uh, i don't think that icc can be influenced by anybody outside of the law or outside of the um, the judges. So they decide and they decide on legal basis. One more over here, uh, in the front here. Hi, uh, a question. Um, the prosecutor, my name is Sheila Sendo from NT, I work for NTV uh, My question would be, uh, you said that you are looking at a situation where you are not likely, I mean, you are likely to get uh, the information that you're looking for from mm -hmm. the government. Uh, but there is the other side. What if you don't get that information? How will that impact on your case? Um, it is difficult for me to uh, speculate that now. Um, there is always uh, room to look for, for other evidence to strengthen your case. And uh, as I said, at the moment, I'm not looking at a scenario where I don't get the evidence, really. I am hoping that uh, what the government has promised will be forthcoming. Uh, I'm Judy Caberia from Capital FM. How would you rate uh, Kenya's cooperation with the court, looking at it that already you have issues about uh, submission of evidence, mm -hmm. and also the fact that ICC has to rely on the Kenyan government to arrest, um, to arrest, um, okay, sorry for the interruption. I mean, how will, um, how, how do you rate the cooperation of the I of Kenya with the ICC, looking at the fact that already we are having problems in the submission of evidence, mm -hmm. and also the fact that the ICC has no police of its own to depend on the Kenyan government mm -hmm. to arrest the, these accused persons just in case they are found guilty mm -hmm. of crimes against humanity? Um, as I said at the beginning of my mission, my coming here was mainly for the purpose of uh, cooperation with the Kenya government. And I, I said, I think I was clear in saying that it could be better. And this is what I came to address. Uh, from my meetings, I have got assurance that this cooperation will be forthcoming. And uh, at the moment, I do not have reason to doubt that it will not come. So we are, I, will, I will leave it at that. Uh, we're gonna go to this side now, down here at the front. It's okay, there's a, there's a mic here somewhere. Okay, take this one. Hi, my name is Bonnie Tiena from the Two Brief Newspaper. Uh, one of the issues arising from your visit in the country is that you could be looking for more evidence to tie the loose end in your case. What do you have to say, what do you have to say about that? Um, uh, investigations are ongoing. I, I think, I thought I was clear at the very beginning uh, when I made a press conference 
and stated the reasons for my visit. Uh, and this is what I have been doing, uh, talking with government officials, um, trying to um, urge them strongly to um, give us some of the requests that have been pending. This is not to say that we've not been receiving anything from the government. We have, but there are some that were pending that is important for us. And this is one, one of the reasons why I came. Um, my mission, this mission, is not an investigative mission. You know, there are others who do that, uh, and they, they, they deploy to the field, they come here. So it was, uh, I think I was clear in what I said at the beginning. It was to urge the government to cooperate more with the ICC, or at least at the, at the level that we want. Uh, Rob, again, the CCTV Africa, uh, I'd like to take you on time of waters within the continent, continent itself. And uh, here, primarily, I'm looking at the Democratic Republic of Congo. Your office is already on record as saying that um, you're investigating the situation in the DRC. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, can you tell us what's the scope of the investigation itself in light of a recent report by you and uh, panel of experts that uh, implicates Rwanda and uh, high-ranking officials within Rwanda and Uganda mm -hmm. as being directly involved in the violence. Mm -hmm. uh, here I'm looking at some of the atrocities that have been committed, rape, I'm also looking at the uh, recruitment of child soldiers and summary executions as well. Um, I'm, I'm sure you will, you will know that um, we have moved to a different phase of our investigations. Uh, we are investigating in the, in the Kivus and uh, we have also investigated, uh, investigating the FDLR primarily, and we've requested for arrest warrants to issue against uh, um, Calixte Mbarushimana, uh, which was as a result of those investigations. Um, our, investigations uh, our investigations are ongoing. Our current problem that we face now with, with what we are currently doing is uh, uh, with Bosco Taganda. Bosco Taganda has been investigated. In fact, recently we, we requested again for warrants of arrest to issue against him, and uh, warrants were issued, this, charge, um, and this time enlarging the charges against him, not only including uh, child soldiers, but also for other crimes, sexual violence, and, and others. But he's, he's out there, he's still not arrested, and uh, we're looking into ways of getting that, that done. This is, this is ICC's investigations. Karen Allen, BBC News. Um, you talked about appropriate steps being taken, um, assurances from the meetings that you had and the principles that appropriate steps will be taken. What's different now uh, to the position six months ago in terms of your confidence in being able to secure the information that you need? But second to that, were you given any clarification as to whether or not police officers and civil servants, members of, uh, of, of the work, that are working for the state, are in a position to give evidence. There seems to be confusion, there seems to be a challenge that they're not permitted to do that. Can you shed some light on that? Well, um, I, what has changed is that I think uh, my visit showing the importance uh, that ICC attaches to, its, uh, the Office of the Prosecutor attaches to the importance of getting this uh, information is at least something